run without a definite goal. I do not flail around like one beating the air, just shadow boxing. But like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached the gospel to others, I myself will not somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. And that's coming to you from 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 7. Just a reminder today, y'all, we are talking about living out your kingdom business and life purpose here. That is definitely what we will be going over today. And we aren't talking about a mere wish here, but creating reality from an inspired idea. Your purpose is life changing. Who's out there ready to find out what your kingdom business purpose is? As you come on, say hello so that we can say hello back to you. And also let us know exactly where you're tuning in from or what type of business that you have. See, a lot of people intentionally just focus on the money when it comes to building a business. And you may want to get paid big and, and skip the nine to five in the 4040 plan, right? And be your own boss. But if that's all you're aiming for, you're missing out on the big prize. Like, what if God chose you to do something big and you're and you missed it for just chasing money that's so small and like money instead of you know instead of chasing that we want to show you what you really want to seek and that's what we're going to talk to you about tonight so i want to welcome everybody out as you come on say hello so we can say hello back to you also y'all let me know uh where you're tuning in from and do me a favor grab your phone so we can go ahead and hit that share button. We're going to get everything started right now. And also would love, love to know what type of business you have and what you are looking at getting started if you don't have a business already. And what city state are you in? Uh, let me go ahead while we have it over here and hit that chat button. See, we got, uh, let's see, let, let's share some, some, some love out there. We got a uh, um, Detroit in the house, R.B. Holloway. What's up? What's up, R.B. Holloway from Detroit? We are glad to have you out there. Um, anybody else? Don't be shy. I see y'all all here. You can say hello so we can say hello back to you. Let us know where you are coming in from. Uh, and we will give you a shout out as as well. And guys, we're going to get started in a few seconds. Well, I've already started, right? But we're going to go ahead and go uh, to that next, next level in a few seconds. So I'll give you a few seconds to share. I grabbed my pump phone and went ahead and, and did my share options. So you can go ahead and do the same. And I am going to go ahead and hop over to the screen so we can get everything going for you all. All right, y'all. So and, and dive in. And today, y'all, I want to welcome you out again. We are talking about business, God, the kingdom, all things to help you change your life and impact yourself. And today our, top, our, our topic is how to discover your kingdom destiny. Psalms 138 and 8 is where we're coming to you from. It says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. And so as we dive into today on the kingdom destiny, I just want you to remember this, okay? Because especially as an entrepreneur, especially when you are out there building your business and you're also focused on the building the kingdom, as well, it, it, you know, sometimes you can feel like you just giving it everything you got and, and you don't know if it's going to work out. And that's why I shared this from 1 Corinthians 9, 26 and 27. Paul said, I am after a lasting crown. Therefore, I do not run without a definite goal. So right there, have a definite goal for what you want to accomplish and what you want to get done not only in your business, but most importantly, with your walk in life. It says, I do not uh, flail around like one beating the air, just shadow boxing. Like no one's out there just like shadow boxing, right? But like a boxer, I strictly discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I preach the gospel to others, 
I myself will not show somehow be disqualified as unfit for service. And we don't want that to happen to anybody. And so today we're talking about living out your kingdom business and your life purpose here. And remember, guys, if you're leaving comments now, I won't be able to see those until we, until the end. So make sure you go ahead and leave those and we'll get back to them at the end. Or if you're catching this during the replay, you can go ahead and leave your comments and it always dings to us and we will make sure that we answer each and every one of them because we're talking about a me we're not talking about a mere wish we're talking about you creating reality from an inspired idea and when i say that man i was thinking about right before i got ready to come down here and do this uh live today the workshop I, you know, I was taking a shower. I don't know. I get a lot of inspired ideas in the shower, but it they were just like popping in there. Or when I'm driving, um, it seems like I get a lot of inspired ideas. So when those come to you and, and, and they should be so big and make you feel uncomfortable that you're like, wow, really me, God, that's what you want me to do. Make sure you write those down. And those are the ones that I'm talking about that you're like, where did that ideal come from? That Are you serious? Is that like really what you want me to do? And we're going to show you how to, you know, know, well, you know, like, I don't have to tell you that. And we're going to talk about that. You know, when the Holy Spirit is talking to you and you know, when that idea is coming from him, it's going to just match what's up in the word. See, your purpose is life changing. It's a God given appointment to do something bigger than ourselves. And that's why it should be a woe. Like if you, if you get this idea and you know you can handle it by yourself, that's you telling you what you want to do. You got to keep listening until you can get God telling you, the Holy Spirit telling you exactly what he wants you to do. In John 15, 16, it says, Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. I mean, like that's the goal right there to be, you know, to have God right there as your friend and, and whatever you ask of him, he will give it to you because he knows that your, your number one focus is to seek him and to do his will. And in this workshop today, a lot of people intentionally, you know, we talk about that, how they just focus on the money and they just talk about getting paid big. Listen, I was one of them at a time, right? And I don't work for anybody in 27 years. I'll tell you guys more of my story in a second. And, and, and they get so focused on, or they're so focused on that 40-40 plan and exactly what they need to do for the next 40 years, or they're at the end of that 40-year plan. And, 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 or, and they're trying to get out and search and figure out how to become their own boss. And then they miss out on the big prize. Like they, in the big prize is it is helping to build the kingdom, being able to to do the will and live out your purpose. That that when you can do that, you know that everything else is going to come. So what if what if, what if God chose you to do something big? Let me know in the comments if you feel already that God has chosen you to do something big, and if you want to share what that big thing is, you can go ahead and put that in there, but just put hashtag God will use me big. He wants me to do something big. And, and it's something that, man, your, your children's children could be talking about. It's something that generations can be changed. It's something that people around the world will benefit from. And that's why it's so important if you haven't felt that or heard that or already are, if, are working on that, that's why it's so important to discover your kingdom destiny. This is your purpose and this is how you create a lasting effect. And, and so this is what it means, y'all, when your fruit should abide. And when we begin to think this way, God, he will get behind our plans and he will root us on just like you would get behind your children's plan. When you know that they want to do something great, you're going to get behind their plans and you're going to root them on. And at that point, when you ask him for things and he gives you what you need, you're going to get what you need and not those temporary riches and false gains, right? 
and you, you get started and then you get knocked back down. You get started and you get knocked back down. See, when you get in alignment with God, it's like you go and, you know, yes, yeah, stuff happens, but it's a different kind of uh, reaction that you have. And if you guys, if you're new to me uh, today, you can probably hear my voice here. So you guys got to just bear with me as we go through this. Uh, but if you've been around a while, you're probably like, what is up with her voice? We just working through this. So I just want you guys to know when you hear that cracking and all of that stuff that we're working through this, right? We don't claim nothing. We're just working through this. And to, we're also going to talk about the five most important questions to help you discover your kingdom destiny and the 10 most popular online business ideas that you can begin implementing in 2022. And at the time of this broadcast, we're just about a week away from summer. So make sure that you go to BibleBusinessAcademy.com forward slash go because we have a summer special for you guys and a 60% off to be able to help you implement these ideas or something else that you may have in getting your business started. Our purpose as a company is to, it, to help you build your business for the kingdom using biblical principles. I mean, think about it. What if you can experience building a six, seven, eight figure business around something that you already love to do, your gift, your skills, or your expertise, or your experience. And then that resources, you just recycle those back into the kingdom to be so that people like imagine your church, you, you made a million, you gave them a hundred grand for, for just tithing. We're not even talking about offerings. Can you imagine how that would change so many lives? Can you imagine how that would free up the, uh, your, 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 your pastor uh, to be able to not even think about other things, but focus on seeking God and getting the message out for you. And that's the whole goal. That's why kingdom business is the key because you put it back into the kingdom. So I want to thank you guys for joining us today for another irresistible message for our kingdom, kingdom business workshop provided by Bible, Bible Business Academy. And you can go to BibleBusinessAcademy.com to learn more about our global organization. I'm your host, Kathy McReynolds, and our goal is to help you build a business so you can get time freedom, debt freedom, and financial freedom. We transform entrepreneurs into kingdom leaders with the sole purpose purpose of growing the kingdom and fulfilling God's original purpose. We believe that this message will equip you to grow in your faith and your finances while advancing your life and business as you discover your purpose and pursue it with passion. So y'all, let's get this started. I want to make sure to let you know to stick around to the end as well, because I'm going to share with you how you can get some exclusive access to building a business with biblical principles and also how we we want to be able to send a gift right to your front door. And inside of that will give you so many things that you can use in order to uh, training and just fun stuff. Right. We, we want to we want to send you some fun stuff that you can also enjoy and help you with having more fun, freedom and fulfillment. If this is your first time tuning in, I normally don't sound like this, but we're going to work it. My name is Kathy McReynolds. I'm from Akron, Ohio. I always just joke and say I grew up shy, sheltered, and in church basically six days a week. My mom was a minister, dad, a football coach, left home at 19, lived in D.C., Baltimore, Boston, and Pittsburgh. We got anybody from those areas say, hey, hey, author, international coach, and trainer, an introvert who loves to win, not perfect by any means necessary, but an action taker and a licensed financial advisor. Man, I've made uh, six plus figures in businesses and also lost it as well. So I've just taken the last 27 years of experience and being able to share with you guys what we do. And the whole key as we're talking about this, and I'll share more of that later, but before I get to that, you can get our book, y'all, Bible Business Secrets right here. 
you can get it on Amazon or you can, if you want the digital version, you can go to BibleBusinessAcademy.com forward slash book and you can pick that up and you can also get a copy of this planner. You definitely want to get this planner as our Believe and Grow Rich planner that is also available on Amazon or you can go to BelieveAndGrowRich.org. And as we come here today to share with you how to understand what your purpose is for the kingdom and for your business. We want you to know that we just don't leave you at the end. We have systems where you can join and be a part of. We have our kingdom management enterprise system. That's where we do everything completely for you. We also have memberships and academies that you can join, and we'll talk about those more at the end. So I'm ready to get this started, and I'm excited to be here with you all today. So it says the kingdom, good news, plus your kingdom destiny, plus your kingdom business equals the kingdom of God. And that's what we want to focus on and what we're going to focus on so we can share with you how to discover your kingdom destiny. See, the message today is a very simple subject and one that most don't mix with business. Uh, we are already like anytime you're talking about, you know, God and business. I used to be of that belief, like you don't mix God with business until I understand that you can't separate it. Right. You have to talk about it. And I always share <coughs> how this was not something that I even thought I would be doing um, a year or so ago, like, and when it, this idea, we talk about ideas come to you because this is part of my kingdom destiny, right? When this idea of building Bible Business Academy came to me, I was like, no, that's not, that's not me. That's not something I want to do. And it just kept coming. And I just remember one day I was like, okay, God, okay, 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 okay. I hear you. And I started the business. And then as I started it and I got involved in it, I, it, it just, everything just start making sense. You know how he says that your steps are already ordered even before you were in your mother's womb. So when I look back at my childhood to my business experience, to my personal experience, everything that I was doing has led me up to this point. So I can't wait to see what he has in store because I'm telling you some of those ideas that he popped into my head today, I was like, wow. And it was just such a blessing. And those ideas came after like literally probably about 10 to 15 hours of just studying and studying for this and some other things that I had to do. And like, and then this is that next level. And that's what we want for you. We want you to tap into and understand and know when the Holy Spirit is speaking with you. So that's why it's important for you to understand the kingdom of God first. And, and, the, and, and it's the only gospel that Jesus talked about. So as a mission, our company, we want over the next three years to help over a thousand people create a seven figure income uh, with the business that they're in. And then we want to take all of those resources and put them back into the kingdom and grow that and help God accomplish what he put for us here to accomplish like he we're not accomplishing it he's doing it through us and we want to be the willing servants to go out there and to be able to do that and so in order for you to understand what your kingdom destiny is i want to share five key principles that will help you to get there so principle number one is to focus on the original purpose for humans so as i'm talking to you guys about this tonight I'm going to break it up in like different segments because before I get to the next part, I really want you to understand these five principles because once you get understanding of these, it'll help you to move into the next phase as we talk about that. So let's remember what the original purpose of our human creation was and was not. That's important. Our purpose was to carry out an assignment that God had mandated for us from the beginning of time. That original purpose, you can find that in Genesis 
for us was to be administrators over his kingdom to uh, we were we're not put we were put here not put here to create different religions or to be entrepreneurs or to get married or to have children or to work for 40 years or to be self-absorbed we were put here to take care of his kingdom and if you don't understand this truth it can leave you lost it can leave you in a state of unnecessary worry and confusion so i want to spend some time going over this and i also want to spend some time talking about how religion has played a role in derailing a lot of people so as i was putting this together i, I looked up on the Oxford Dictionary today, June, uh, I don't know what date it is, but we're in 2022, right? In June. And this is what the information that I got on Google. And who would agree? Like, this is where a lot of people go to get information. So when you start to see all of these things, you can really see, especially in the days and times that we're in now, when social media and the internet is so prevalent and, and, and just about everybody has access, how people could get confused. It says the religion, this is what the definition in the Oxford Dictionary says, the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods. Ideas about the relationship between science and religion, a particular system of faith and worship. Of course, it gives you the plural, religious, or the world's great religions, a pursuit of interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance, right? And similar things that you can find there is faith, belief, divinity, worship, creed, teaching, doctrine, um, theology, sect, cult, religious groups, faith, community, church, denomination, body file. Like, even as I get through this, if you are new in Christ and, and you're just trying to learn all this stuff and you go pull up this definition right there, you're confused. So no matter who's sharing with you, including me, make sure you set aside time each day to go study what you're learning and, and allow and know, because, you know, God says my sheep knows my voice. You will eventually start hearing the right voice. And I remember when, you know, I really start seeking God, right? And you know, it's one thing to grow up in it. It's another thing to get personal with it yourself and really start seeking them. All of the stuff that religion had put in my mind I had to read it in over and over and over again to get out because you can get caught up in that. Like one thing when when I said to you guys, you'll the sheep will know my voice. I used to think like, so is this as loud, audible voice? Like, what is it? And it's you say and you think things yourself all the time. And that's how I've heard. Now, some people said they've heard a lot loud, audible voice. I never have. Right. We know that there is instances in the scripture where that has occurred. So it could occur, but you will know. And all you got to do is once you hear it, go and search it in the Bible. One of the beauties of today is that you get, you can Google everything, right? You can check it and don't just check one version of what's written. Check several versions of what's written so that you can get it. And I promise you, your understanding will come. And, and then as I'm reading this, I see that they, it says consumerism is the new religion. I was like, what the heck is consumerism? Does anybody else know what consumerism is and why it's being called a religion? So of course, y'all, y'all know I had to look it up. And I had to put it on here. And I'm doing this because I this is this is why it's so important that you, you study to show yourself approved, that you have to don't let the world take you away from your kingdom destiny and purpose, which we're going to get into in a second. And it, it goes on to say consumerism, the new religion, is the protection or promotion of interests of consumers. It's kind of ironic that it, it gave us this example and talked about that. And I'm not going to read all that industrial revolution and all that. You can look it up and blah, blah, blah. But it has to do with business as well. And I'm like, 
No, business is not a religion, but guess what? People look at it that way. So anytime you're like so consumed on something, people can call it anything and make people do whatever they want to do, want them to do. Because if you're weak that way, you'll begin to follow things that are not leading you the way that God wants them to lead you. So it's important for you to get this. See, people are lost in and because of religion. And the last thing God wanted was a religion. Like that's not even something that he talked about. Religion is a very dangerous thing to people who are seeking a purpose. And this is why I'm sharing this with you, because if you're seeking a purpose and you're watching this and you signed up and you want to know what your purpose is for the kingdom, for your life, then you have to separate. It's like, you know, take that sifter and you got to sift through and sift out a lot of stuff in order to get what you were called to do. See, religion does not necessarily answer your questions about life. Some religious will condemn you. Some will let you do what, yeah, I was talking to someone and and we uh, they, we mentioned non-denominational and they're like no 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 i don't do non-denominational because they're for everything and and like so that was a prime example and non-denominational is you're not part of any religious thing right you're just doing what the word says but you see how just that one word non-denominational can can take a person's thought pattern based on what they were taught and what they had of experience to make them think that all things go if you're non-denominational. This is why titles of religion from non-denominational, Baptist, Catholic, I'm not going to name them all. That's not what this is about, right? If you get caught up in titles and you know who you are instead of what you are and what you were called to do, you could miss out. And see, religion will always keep you searching for something. And we shouldn't be searching anymore. We should be seeking God because he already gave us the answers. They're here. So it's not something that you have to search for. So that was principle number one. Principle number two that you must understand before we get to your purpose is the fall of people who lost, who the fall of people was the loss of a kingdom, not the loss of heaven. Because religion has also made us to believe that our purpose was to come here, chill out, or do something very small, or not do something big, and then we can die and go to heaven. That's not what it, what it is at all. So it's important for you to know and to understand that. And we don't have time to really dive deep into that, but I just need you to know and understand that that's that the, the loss of heaven and the fall of people was the loss of the kingdom and not the loss of heaven. And heaven was not the that was not the initial. Um, purpose. It was completely different. Now you had to read Genesis on this to be able to get and understand all of this, right? Principle number three, the promise of redem redemption was to restore a kingdom. Everything is going back to restore the kingdom. And, and this is why, you know, I love sharing and talking about this because it will help you to become so much like you become such a better person when you know that you know what God is telling you to do and what he wants. And, and it really, really, really helps you. See, what man lost, God wants to restore. Have you ever lost something like even yourself and you want to restore that? You just, sometimes you're like, if I could just get back, if I could just have a do-over, if I could just redo that, right? So when man, and you guys know the story of that, when that was lost, that's God. Now he's like, okay, I got to change the plans. Now, you know, the purpose hasn't changed, but how we're going to get there, we got to just make a little detour like we talked about. You can go back and look and listen to some of our messages, but it's just like that, that GPS. If you're driving to a destination and, and 
a road is blocked off or your car breaks down or whatever the case is and you got to take a detour you still want to get to the original destination that you put in there you just got to go about it a little different and when you look at the redemptive work of jesus it was not to establish a religion or a worship experience nor rituals or traditions or choirs and all of that stuff now all of those stuff are they great yes but that was not the original goal. That was not his goal. The purpose for Jesus coming, his assignment was to restore the kingdom that was lost by the people. And these are key principles for you to understand so that you can know what your purpose is. So I want you to make sure that you stay focused on the main goal at all times, like put it on an index card, the kingdom of God. You can have many systems, many methods, and many techniques used in your project, in any project. And whenever you have those things, like the things that I just talked about, like, you know, the, 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 uh, <coughs> the churches, the, the choirs, the preachers, the teachers, uh, the redemption, all of that, like those are systems, methods, and techniques used so that we can get to the original purpose of the kingdom of God. And that's where entrepreneurs were used in the beginning. And that's where we're going to be used now. See, it, it when you're looking at your goals and they're laid out, you always focus on systems, methods, and techniques and all of them lead to one place, that original purpose. Salvation and all the redemptive acts of God's, including the promise of the Messiah, are part of the project to restore the kingdom. And your purpose, your purpose is part of that project also to restore the kingdom. That's why it's important for you to find it. That's why it's important for you to walk in it and know what it is. And even the fulfillment of the virgin conceiving the miraculous childbirth was part of the project to restore the kingdom. I mean, you think of project manager, when the project managers get all get together, they have a focus. They already know what the goal is. And that's the part in the roles that we're playing in order to make that happen for us as well and to live our, our purpose. Jesus preaching and teaching about the kingdom of God was part of the project to restore the kingdom. Am I making sense here? Are you getting this? Let me know in the comments if you're getting this. And just put hashtag restore the kingdom. See, Jesus even given his life on the cross was part of the project to restore the kingdom. Calvary was one of the goals in the project to ultimately accomplish the original and final purpose, which is to restore God's kingdom on earth. It was not the goal of God. It was the means to an end. He had to do that because man fell. And when they fell, he still had to have his purpose uh, realized. And that's the same thing for you and your business. You may fail and things happen. But if you know what the original purpose is, you just call an audible and change the play. So I don't want you all to miss out. And I'm going to make this statement again because I don't want you to misunderstand me. And I want to make sure you get this because if, if you get this and I'm crystal clear about it and you understand it, it will help you to be able to know what your kingdom purpose is and how that fits in with entrepreneurship and the role that you're going to play. See, Calvary is not the gospel. It's part of the project that takes us to the good news, which is the kingdom of God. I was talking to my mom about this today, and, and, and we were saying the same thing. Like, most people don't preach or teach about the kingdom of God. They teach about everything else. But when you really get into the word and you listen to what Jesus taught about, that's exactly what he talked about. And that's what we're supposed to talk about. That's what we're supposed to focus on. And that's what we're supposed to do. And that's why we have these kingdom business workshop series every Thursday to be able to help people get a clearer picture of the things that we're talking about here. See, God created you to be a representative for his will. And this assignment 
is your kingdom purpose? So my question to you, are you ready, willing to do and become whoever he needs you to become in order for you to carry out your assignment, to carry out your kingdom purpose once you understand what that is. But in order to do that, and the reason I had to go through what we just went through is so that you understand God's original purpose and you get that in your head. And if you're just hearing this for the first time, as I did, it, it, was, it could take time for you to really get it. Like I used to think the original purpose was heaven, right? Because why? That's what people taught. That's what people preached about. And I didn't study like, and, and like, guys, I'm gonna tell you this. I had read the Bible probably about six times all the way through year after year, after year, after year, after year. And sometimes when you read something the first time, it, like the very first time I did it, it was because we had a mentor, right? Is one of our business mentors. And that's what he required us to do. And we used to meet every morning about um, at eight o'clock every single morning. And we were required to read every day six pages of the Bible in order for us to read the entire Bible all the way through. It was part of our leadership and management training. He also had us read a proverb for 30 days. So when I read it through the first time, it was just to complete the assignment that was assigned to me, right? And see how all of this becomes part of your purpose. And I, yeah, I would learn some things about it and I would be like, oh yeah, this is cool. I didn't know there. And then some things I was like, man, this is some, 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 you know, scandalous stuff going on here in the word. And I didn't really get it. And it wasn't until, you know, a decade later, even after reading it like three or four years straight in the row, but and still being in the process, it didn't seep in like it's seeping in now. The understanding wasn't there. So if you're that person who's like, I don't get what she's talking about, nor can I hardly understand her because of her voice today, it's okay. You may have to listen to this over and over again, but God will give you the wisdom and the knowledge. Just keep asking him and he will give it to you and he will give you the understanding on that because you need that in order to understand your purpose and to understand what his purpose is for you. But you must be. This is the key thing that I'm telling you in order to step into that realm of doing what he called you here to do. And if you look through the Bible, all the people that he called to use it, you got to be courageous and you got to be confident that you can carry out your purpose. And it doesn't that it's a difference when you're like, you know, puffed up and like, yeah, I got this and I can do this. And it's all about how you're feeling. It's completely different when you know that you know that no matter what God got you and he will, he will, he will take you through whatever you need to go through in order to get to what he told you and your purpose for you to do. Because when we were originally here, it, we were put here to dominate and have dominion over the earth and it was lost. So I want you to speak, to, to ask yourself, are you willing to study every day, to read every day, to listen to something every day so that you can get that boldness and confidence in yourself and to be able to speak boldly and reasoning and persuade it persuasively so that people will get the message and most importantly so that you'll be able to do what you were called to do and, and, and this is from acts um 19 and 8 it says and he entered the synagogue We're talking about jesus here right and for three months he spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. So think about that for three straight months. This is what he did. I think about when I, you know, went live for the first time a couple of years ago on, on online. I hadn't did it before. And I had spoke on stages. I did a lot of stuff, but talking and speaking it was not me. And it, I remember the very first time I did it, like literally, I was so nervous, y'all. 
and that tears kept coming out of my eyes as I was talking. And I just said to myself, suck it up, buttercup. Just don't, because I, I went to hit that disconnect button. And I was like, no, you're not going to hit it. You said you were going to do it, so do it. And I literally, from that point, went live a, almost two years every single day. So what that helped me to do was to prepare me for where he has me going. Because had I not went live every single day, I would have probably been in my head like I was about, well, this is to the world. This is not to a room. This is to my family. This is to my friends. This is to everybody. What if they don't like me? What if, you know, my voice gets nervous and people are able to tell what if, what if, what if, like, you know, that judging stuff. And now I be like, I don't care what they say, what they think. I'm just going to do what God told me to do. And that confidence came from studying in his word, reading through his word, and knowing that I can imperfectly create, do and live out my kingdom purpose the way he wants me to live it out. And that as I learn and I grow and I get better, he will equip me with everything that I need. And I want you to take that away from what we're talking about here today to know that no matter what, he will equip you and he will be there. But you have to be willing to speak boldly, to, sp to, to share, to do exactly what Jesus did and it may be three months, it may be three years, whatever it is for you, are you willing to pay the price and do what's necessary in order for your kingdom destiny to be lived out? And let, let me know in, in the comment section, put like, yes, all in, yes, all in, let me know. And y'all remember, I can't see them now, but I will check them out in the end. Here's another thing that will stop you from reading your kingdom destiny. I got to tell you all this stuff that will just push you out of it so that you will be aware when they come your way. And then you'll be like, oh, that's what she was talking about. Okay, this is what I was feeling. So I get, I know what to do now so that I can get to where I need to get to. I call this the three R's, religion, relationships, and reasons. These are, the, if you don't understand this, you're going to be stuck in the three R's. And <coughs> It, it, it always, when I say this, it reminds me of in school and they're like the three R's, you know, writing, reading and arithmetic. And first of all, arithmetic starts with an A. And again, this is why you don't want to be of this world. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. You got to be the kingdom citizenship and live in there because these are things that just they still the, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And it's always in these slight, silent ways that he'll snatch what you're supposed to have, just like he did with Eve, just like he, you know, with Adam and all of that. You don't want that to happen to you. So if you don't understand this, you're going to literally miss out on your purpose. So let me know if you're getting this. And if not, just keep keep watching and listening. If you need to book a call with me, you can do that as well. And if you don't understand, and but definitely get in the word because that's where you're going to get it from. And he will give you something I can never give you, right? If you don't understand this, you will stay stuck in poverty and depression and sadness until the day you die. And you don't want to miss out on your life, the life that God had for you because of religion, relationships, and reasons that either you create or other people create for you. And if you don't understand this, you will use religion, relationships, and reasons to be a crutch rather than walking into your greatness, into your purpose, and doing it with confidence, with power, and with boldness, because that's what you do. If you're a child of God, that's what you do. We always say that we're McReynolds, right? 
we're fighting for the name on the back of our, our jersey. So if I could say that with so much boldness for my last name with from my earthly father, imagine the boldness you want to say that from your heavenly father, for, from the father of the fathers, right? That That's the whole key there. And so don't let any religion, don't let any relationship or any reason stop you from getting to God's purpose for your life and understanding what your purpose is and then walking it out and doing it. So are you ready for this? So what I did was I put some scriptures here. You can screenshot this and you can go back and, and you can look at these so that it helps to give you the courage to keep going when you're looking for your destiny, when you're walking in your destiny, when you're confirming your destiny, when you're there, I'm telling you, even though things don't always go right, because they won't, right? Because in the word, I you know, like take Job, take, you know, he was a started out, he's a righteous man. Take look at Jesus, right? That he he had to give his life. Everybody has to go through something to get through something. So don't let because it didn't work out or something went wrong, don't get in that mindset. That's that reason, right? Don't get in the reason, oh, well, if this happened, then this is the reason why I shouldn't. Well, maybe it's the reason why you should and what you should do in order to get to that next level of thinking in your life. I always say when a problem comes your way, and that's the time for you to say, okay, God, here's a challenge. And that means that you need me to learn something or get stronger at something or, or, or to get better. So what is it that you need me to understand and do better so that I can carry out your purpose? Because whatever you bring, whatever I need to go through, I'm willing to go through it so I can get to it and I can live out your purpose. And you, you know, at the end, when, when, when we're, when we're together, you're going to be, we are together now, but you're going to be like, you know, well done, my good and faithful servant. You did that. Like you did that thing. Right. So that's the whole key. Just like Paul's, when I, when I talked about in the beginning uh, of him boxing, he said, I don't want to miss out on the prize. You don't want to have to do this so that you miss out on the prize. So if you look at a scale of one to 10 and where you're at, you got to, you got to put yourself, you know, you have to go 10 and beyond. And I, the same thing, like I, I probably one or two on getting to where he needs me to go. And so that's why it's so important every day to get in his word and to study his word and to know and to understand that so that you can do the things that he's telling you to do, right? John 15 and 16 said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. So that's something you need to understand is that, and I used to think like I chose God. No, I didn't choose him. He chose me. That's the key. And when you know that you were chosen by him, I'm like, come on, y'all. How good can that make you feel to know that he chose you? Jeremiah 1 5 said, before I formed you in, your, in, in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nation. What did he appoint you to do? What do you think he appointed you? He, if he knew Jeremiah before he was in his womb, he knew you as well. So he knows exactly what you were born to do, what you're going to go through. And so when you're going through stuff, just these are your faith formations that we talked about. Matthew 22, 14 says, for many are called, but few are chosen. So do you want to be part of the many who are called or do you want to be the part of the few who are chosen? And that's the exciting part right there. Uh, in, in First Paul 101, it says an apostle, special messenger, personally chosen representative. Like, come on now. You're the personally chosen representative of Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed by the will of God. That is by his purpose and his choice and choice. Like that is that's just like, I don't know. That's just like everything. That is everything. And, and that's why it's important to seek him and his righteousness. And you go on YouTube and watch some of the videos that we have there. And it'll go into details on all of this. And while you're over there, make sure you subscribe as well. And, and, and it'll all start to make sense, right? So are you ready to step into your kingdom purpose? That's what I need to know. Just let me know. Are you ready?
to step into your kingdom purpose. So if you're ready, I'm telling you, you need these scriptures. You need other scriptures in order to get you there because it's that word that's getting in you that will get you through anything. It gives you a confidence like you sit up straight. You, you don't worry about things like the peace. When they say a peace beyond understanding, it's a peace beyond understanding. And it's also a peace beyond explaining. You can't explain the difference between building a business or building your life without God in that understanding and with building him. Cause I've been in both places. I've been where if something, you know, I tell the story a lot of times in 2008, when I lost everything, I was devastated during that season. But guess what? When even a business that was doing like three or four times more of what that business was doing, I got a text saying, Hey, we just sold the building. You lost your, you lost your business. And and it was, you know, at times over 20 grand a month. And I was like, okay, what's next? You know, what do we need to do next? I wasn't, I didn't even think a nanosecond of it. I was like, okay, God, what, what's next? This is where you want to get to. And it took 20 some years to get there. So we want to shorten your curve so that you know how to deal with these situations when they come in. And that's why when you know what your purpose is, you know what you're here for, you don't alter. You're not chasing after everything, trying to like, you know, this, the next thing, or chasing after money and all of that stuff is so important. Um, First Thessalonians 1 and 4 says, for we know brothers loved by God that he has chosen you. First John 2, um, 2, 27 said, but the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. Like, I, I listen, I appreciate y'all watching this, but you don't have to. I watch a lot of stuff. I don't have to. I can just keep reading, 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 but it comes by hearing. So if I'm going to have something on, I like, I, this is what I want to have on. I want to have, you know, someone that's speaking my language, someone that's teaching me something so that it can help with my purpose. And then God confirms that because I don't need that. It's just that he puts people and he used people uh, in your life and, and for their purpose in order to help you to get to your purpose. But this is so important. He says that it, um, but the anointing that you receive from him abides in you and you have no need that anyone should teach you. So when number one is somebody is trying to tell you that, you know, they they could teach you what your calling is and what your purpose is. They can't. I can't teach you that. What I can do is give you signs. You know, like we have the four signs as guys calling me to start a business like over on YouTube. But I can't tell you what God is calling you to do. That would lead. That's not my gift that I can say that. But and it says that right there. But as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and there's no lie, just as it's as it has taught you abide in him. So just keep abiding in him. He said, if you abide in me and, and I and you, you, you will know, you will know what to do and it will be so clear and you will have so much peace about it as you go through it. See, entrepreneurs, if you're here, that means that you've been called to be an entrepreneur. You've been chosen to, to take your entrepreneurship and, and take that to a level so that you can help do grow the kingdom so that you can help change some lives so that you can help make a difference in this world. And when you look back at the disciples, they were entrepreneurs. I talked about that in, in one of our one one of our um, past um, workshops. So, you, you know, entrepreneurs are a special kind of people. We are average and ordinary people, but we're chosen to do something extraordinary, not for us, but for the kingdom of God. Now, entrepreneurship has not always meant that to me. Entrepreneurship before was about making a lot of money, having a lot of fun, doing it. And you can still make a lot of money. You can still have a lot of fun, but that was the number one focus. And I understood that no, that is not what the number one focus should be. The number one focus is to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. When you do that, everything will be added into you. I promise you, if you got four hours 
and you and you set it aside, whether it's an hour here or you got 15 minutes or you got five minutes, 10 minutes, pick up God's word, listen to his word, do that. And I'm telling you, it will change your life. See, here's what I used to think and what I used to do. Like, oh, well, no, I don't have time to read that. Oh, no, I don't have time to do that because I need to call these people. I need to, you know, follow up that, with them on about the money. I need like it was chasing money, chasing money, chasing money. When you chase money, money runs from you. And we're going to be talking about that more on an entire workshop. But when you chase fulfilling your purpose, when you go after and you seek God's kingdom and what he wants, what the maker of you who created you wants you to do, it's a game changer. You're living in a whole nother zone and that's what we want to help you with. So there are five important questions to help you to discover your kingdom destiny. So everything that we just talked about, I want to make sure that you got that before you get to this, right? And we're going to talk about the five most important questions to help you discover your kingdom destiny. And if you miss getting the answers right to even one of these, it could possibly lead to your kingdom destiny not being fulfilled. That's how important this is. So make sure if you haven't gotten a pen, which you should already be writing this down, you definitely want to do that for this next part. And guys, even if you're here on the live and you still got some questions or it's not all coming together yet, just watch it all the way through. And then go back and rewatch it and rewatch it and rewatch it. And the more you hear it and the more you listen, listen to it, the more it'll start to make sense. And then take the word and read the word and do your own studying. And eventually you're going to be like, OK, yeah, now I get it. Oh, that makes sense. And all of us have had aha moments in life. And that's what you'll get. See, number one question that I want you to ask yourself so that you can know what your kingdom destiny is, is should kingdom business leaders think about business for profit and wealth? Important, okay? So we're talking, we're we're talking business workshop here, right? So the number one thing that I want you to, to ask yourself, should kingdom business leaders think about business for profit and wealth? Now, why is that important? So let's think about this. The love of money, money is talked about in the Bible more than anything else, right? And religion has made us feel that you can't make money and and, and, and as they say, and get into heaven again, right? As in, right now, you should be like, well, that don't even make sense because that wasn't the original purpose. But that's why if your mind is saying, I either got to chase money or I shouldn't work for money or I shouldn't make a profit because this is what everybody said, then it's going to stop you from doing what you need to do and living out your purpose. So you got to write that question down. And I want you to ask yourself, what is your relationship with money? What do you think about when it comes to money? What do you think about when it comes to business? Are you comfortable with making a profit? Are you even comfortable with asking people for money? Are you even comfortable with putting yourself out there and and sharing what your business is because you don't want people to think that it's about the money for you? So if you're feeling any of those feelings, then your relationship with money and your understanding of it needs to go to the next level. So the best way that I know how at this time to help you to be able to do that is take you right to the word. And and we're going to share because there are so many things that you can share. But I'm going to share the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, 14 through 30. So I want to make sure that you go back and you read over uh, Matthew 25, 14 through 30 so that you can get clarity on wealth on profit, on business, and what's okay and what's not okay, and how to think. Again, that reasons, those three R's, right? And and, and how to think so that 
you can live out your kingdom destiny. So that's the number one question. Remember, we said we got five of them. So that's one of them. Should kingdom business leaders think about business for profit and wealth? And let me know in the comments, what do you think? What's your answer to that right now? How do you feel about that? Are you comfortable with money? So let's let, let's take a look in, 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 at what the word says, right? It says, uh, uh, it, 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 this, and also this will give you a good framework in order for you to be able to renew your thinking because that's the whole key for you to renew your thinking, how you think about money so that you can not have it ruling you, right? Because it rules you. Like it, like people think Satan rules you. No, money rules you. It is the like when you think about it and you read scriptures on it, it tells you that like next to God, there's money. It's like money, God. This is what people like are focused on. And if God, if money is up here, God's down here, right? You got to get God always up in here and not the money. So let's go ahead and go into it. And also in the book of Genesis, we see that God placed Adam in the garden to work it and take care of it. So no matter what people tell you, we were made to work, not work for other people, right? Some of you were, but if you're on here, you're a business owner. So you that means that you were chosen to be an entrepreneur because not everybody has that entrepreneur spirit. You probably have family members or friends who don't get you, who are like, you know, they don't understand you and that's okay. It used to didn't be okay, but it's okay. So I want you to get to that point to know they weren't chosen for that. So if you ever are around everybody and, and you're talking about business to people who are not business owners, or, or even thinking about business, that conversation is kind of awkward. But if you're around all of your business people and y'all all are talking about business, it's like you're like with my people and it's good. And the conversation is flowing. You're learning, they're learning and, and everyone's into it. So imagine when you take that and you add that on top of when you're talking about the kingdom and you're talking about business and 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 what the call what what you were put here for and all of that stuff it just takes it to a whole nother level and that's where you want to be as kingdom business leaders we have a mission that god expects us to accomplish and it's here and now like this is the time for that Far too many religious people today, they see salvation as simply like a plane ticket to heaven. So, you know, you you give your life, you say, I believe, you go to church, you do the rituals every single day or every Sunday or, or Saturday, whatever you're doing. And you're thinking, OK, that's good. I'm just going to go through life. And when I die, I'll go to heaven. That that was not God's plan. And, and that's Satan's way of just getting us not to really experience what he wants us to experience. And a lot of it is you, if you know you're not doing everything that you need to do in order to make that happen. So stop waiting to just board the plane. Stop letting life just create itself for you. When you know your purpose, you wake up differently every single day. You do things differently every single day. You're focused on your mission. You don't spend time doing, you know, scrolling through Facebook. You don't spend time or whatever social media you're on. You don't spend time wasting time. You spend time doing the things that you were called to do. Does that include having fun? Does that include vacations? Does that include relaxing and getting away? Yes, even Jesus did that, right? So don't think that it's all go, 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 but you're going and you're doing with the purpose. You know exactly what you need to do when you wake up because you know what your purpose is and every plan that you put in place and every move that you make it's all directed in order for you to get better at what he called you to do and the parable of the talents it it's it'll help you to understand that and it, it teaches you how to await god's coming and which is the true prophet 
if you really look at it, it's the everlasting crown. That is the whole key thing is the everlasting crown of what you're going to do. So let's go ahead and dive into the parable of the talents. It says for it's just like a man who was about to take a journey and he called his servants together and trusted them with his possessions. To one, he gave five talents to another two and to another one, each according to his own ability. And then he went on his journey. The one who had received the five talents went at once and traded it, traded with them, and he made a profit and gained five more. Okay, so I'm going to just stop right there. Talents, and we're going to talk about what talents is in a second, so money and also your abilities, right? So immediately when that idea came to him, when he was given that, right, that idea or those resources, he immediately got into action and he went and he made a profit and he gained five more. So a lot of you have these business ideas that you've been given, but you keep sitting on it and you keep saying you, you, you reasons, right? You start using those reasons of, oh, I don't have the money or I don't have the experience. I don't have the knowledge or I don't know what to do because you're relying on you in order to make that happen. Instead of saying, okay, God, you gave me this idea. And then you immediately, you can start researching. You can call up some people. There are things that you can immediately start doing in order to make that happen. You can read a book. You can watch a YouTube. You can do so many things to immediately get into action, just like it says there. And, and so that you can make a profit and you can get and he gained five more. And likewise, the one who had two made a profit and gained two more. But the one who had received the one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. So for you out there who's been given that idea and you've been talking about that same idea for three, five years or three to five months or three to five days and you haven't taken action and that action could be getting in a class, it could be buying a book, it could be calling a mentor, it could be doing some research, you're hiding the master's money. You're hiding God's money. You're hiding his, 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 his ideas that he gave you. So if you know that you're sitting on these ideas and you haven't gotten into action and immediately started doing something with it to gain a profit, then you're you're not doing it right. So you got you you have to change that in order to make that happen. And that means that you're not living in your destiny. And so those are things that you have to say, okay, I hit it. I didn't do it. I've been talking about it forever. I'm a talker and not a doer. You got to admit that to yourself, right? I got all these ideas that God has given me, or I, or even if you take one of the ideas and I haven't implemented anything, I've just been talking about it, talking about it. It's kind of like that person who, um, you know, in high school, they were the big star or the big, you know, and everybody talked about them and they're like, 40, 50, 60 years old, still talking about those moments in high school, but haven't done anything different, right? We all know who those people are, right? That's what it's like when God gives you that, that idea, when he gives you those resources and you do nothing with it. Just like when, even after being in business, I think at that time was 25 years when this idea came to me, I was like, no, nah, I like, I started some other business. I, I was doing them, but I was like, nah, I, I'm not one to be teaching, you know, at that time I said religious stuff, right? Because it didn't sit right with me then. And it just kept coming. So when something just keeps coming at you, you eventually pay attention to what is coming to you and like, why? And why me? Why am I the one he wants to do this? And so, you know, because you know, and you're reading, you're studying that I'm just going to do it. Because if, if it's this strong and it's coming to me this hard, it must be from God. Because I ain't no way in the world I would do it or the devil would even want me to do it. Right. So you have to know and understand what keeps coming to you why it keeps coming to you and what is stopping you from doing 
what you know you need to do or what you are called to do. Or maybe you get started with something and you get stuck at it or something goes wrong and you quit. You got to know why you're a quitter. You got to know why, like, don't take this stuff personally, but these are the things that's stopping you from, from your, your, your kingdom destiny, from living out your purpose, because either you quit, you, 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 either you quit, you don't get started or you lie about it, or you're lazy about it, or you just don't care about it. These are all the things that are stopping you from your kingdom destiny. And you don't want them to keep stopping you from becoming who you were called to be. And that's why it's important to recognize it, not to judge yourself, but to, to write it out so that you can start doing the things that you need to do in order to make it happen. It's always, how can I? And it doesn't always have to be you, like you're the orchestrator of it. So if there's a skill set that you don't know and you don't understand how to do, it's not about you being the one to actually do it. You can actually orchestrate everything and you can hire and get a team because God had a team on everything that he did. Jesus had a team. He had disciples, right? He, the, every, every story that you see from someone carrying out their purpose, there was a team of the people to make the dream come true. So don't get caught up in what you don't know. Start saying to yourself the simple thing, how can I? What do I need to do? God, I know you got me, right? That's why you got to get into the word, get into those scriptures so that it can just keep you going. So that's important. He hid his master's money. So let's find out what happened. You already know what happened. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. So you can, he, he, it was a long time. And then he returned and settled. Because see, here's what happens sometimes. People, you get these resources, you get those ideas, and you think if you don't hear from God, you know, right away again, it, it's something that's not, for you to do, or you forget about it, right? But he's he going to eventually come back around. And I'm thinking of my, my um, niece, TT. she's like uh, eight now, I think. And I remember her saying, at the end of time, God's going to ask you, did you tell people about the kingdom? And he don't want to hear any excuses. And, and, and you're going to have to say, yes, I did, or no, I didn't. And when he got back, just like he did with the servants, he had to settle his accounts with them and he's going to settle his account with you. How are you going to be able to answer that? Right. Are you getting this? This is making sense, right? He said, and the one who had received the five talents came and brought him five more saying, master, you entrusted me to, you entrusted to me five talents. See, I made a profit. I gained five more talents. See, when you're winning, when you know that you woke up and you did what you needed to do and you went out and make things happen, you are happy to go and share and say, look, you gave me this and here's what I did. Here's what I made happen, right? And, and the master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over little. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. I love that part. Share in the joy of your master. He's like, I gave you this. You made it do what it do. You made it work. And because you made it work and you made it happen, I want you to share in the joy of your master. That is no different. And then your family and your friends, when everybody gets together and everybody gets something done, you want them to share in the joy of what everybody got done and got accomplished. And that's the beauty of that. And the one who had the two talents came for it. See, they came for it. If you don't come for it, if you don't step up, if you're not the first one, like if you're in a group, when we used to meet in our trainings, it's like the people who know they did or they had the answer, like in class, they'd be like, teacher, pick me. I know. I know, I know, right? Your hand is up. But if you're that person who you know you didn't do what you do, you're like hiding. Your your head's down, right? That so like all of those reasons are, are stopping you from becoming who you want to, who you were born to become. And the one who had two talents came forth and said, "Master, you entrusted me with two talents. See, see, I made a profit." So if it's, if they're excited about making a profit and, and they're like, hey, I gained two more talents. Hey, I made a profit over here. What, 
why, why aren't you, you can do the same thing. So don't let money and what the world says and what religious said about making a profit, making money and all of that stuff. Don't let that stop you because in the word is showing you exactly what they said. But most importantly, it's showing what, what, what the master said. Come share my joy, right? Come share my joy. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things, sharing the joy of your master. Even though he had less, he still got more. And see, a lot of times you, you, that also is another reason that stops you from, from getting to where you're at because you're looking like, wow, this is all I got and they got this. And then you get that comparitis in you and you end up doing nothing. Whatever you have, make it work. And once you make what you have work, you'll start getting more. He'll, he'll give you more to share in the joy. But see, here, here, here's the one, right, who had received one talent also came forward saying master all right so imagine how they came forward with zeal with zest with excitement and he came forward with his head down i'm assuming right putting this in my words with his head down looking down at the ground not looking up in the eye and saying master i knew you to be a harsh and demanding man reaping the harvest where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed so I was afraid, afraid to lose the talents. First of all, back in 24, uh, uh, blaming, 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 blaming is lame. So if you blame, it's lame. It's never someone else's fault. It's never someone else's fault. Why you do what you do, always take personal responsibility. Because without taking personal responsibility, it will knock you out of your kingdom destiny. It doesn't even matter if I can, when I get to the rest of them, you won't even get there because it's going to knock you out. So I was afraid to lose the talent. And I went and hit your talent in the ground to see you have what, what and hit your talent in the ground. See, you have what is your own, right? So I, you, you got what yeah, you gave me. I'm giving it back to you, right? But his master answered him. He, he said, you wicked, lazy servant. You wicked, lazy? What? That's in the word. Yes, you wicked, lazy, lazy servant. You knew that I reaped the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. Then you ought to have put my money with the bankers and at my return, I would have re received my money back with interest. So what is that saying to you? Like, you got to make something happen with something. Ain't nothing. Something from something leaves uh, nothing from nothing leaves nothing, right? You... Everything you do has to grow, has to, to, to make interest, has to get better, has to become a profit. And if you're not making things a profit, you are wicked and lazy. And when you look at lazy, that means that you're probably not um, studying. You're probably spending more time on the social media then you are reading and learning on how to do things, right? Or you're not taking classes. You'd rather spend money on splurges than paying for trainings or working with people. And it's not just me, guys. I like you, whoever you want to help you, don't be called a wicked and lazy servant. If you haven't gotten that idea out there and, 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 and or you're not and you're not taking it and you're not making it and you're hiding it and you keep saying, you know, this idea, I've had it for years, and but you're not doing anything about it, you got to get out of being a wicked, lazy servant. You got to change your actions and change your thoughts. That's why I had to go back through all of that stuff that we talked about in the beginning. So you understand where did this come from? Why am I doing these habits and these behaviors? Why do I keep repeating negative stuff and not never making anything happen? If you don't, what, as we say, check yourself, you're going to wreck yourself. You don't check yourself. You'll never get to the promise. You'll never get to your purpose because it won't happen. He says, so take the talent away from him, right? And give it to the one who has 10 talents. And so you're like, well, they already got some. So give it to them. 
because you want it to grow. That's what the world is about. That was God's original purpose. He put us here to work his resources. He gave us dominion over it so that we can grow and be fruitful and multiply. He didn't give it it's a stuff for us to just sit down, be lazy, kick back and chill and wait till heaven shows up, you know, like, no, that's not what we're to do. We're, we're, we're here to do stuff. And I'm telling you, when you get in that mindset and when you get in that mold, life is different. You want to live in there. It says for to everyone who has and values. OK, that's the key thing and values his blessings and gifts from God. And he uses them wisely. So I'm challenging you and I'm asking you, are you valuing your blessings and your gifts from God? Are you using them wisely? More will be given. So if more is not being given to you, if you're not where you need to be and you feel like the world is crashing down around you or nothing seems to go right for you, check your values. Check your values for your blessings and gift that he actually gave you. And you know what they are. You know what you do every single day. You know what you do behind closed doors. You know what you do when no one's looking. And so that means that you're not wisely doing what you need to do. So just change it as part of the daily habits. And you may like, well, Kathy, how do I change it? One, you make a decision that you're going to change it. It starts with a decision. You have to decide that I am going to become who I was called to become. I'm going to live out my kingdom purpose. So you have to mentally make that decision. You already made the decision, right? That you believe and that you know, and you are, you understand Calvary. You already made that decision. This is completely different. This is where people get it confused because they well, it's not about works. Like, yeah, we know that, right? You you need to understand that. Yes, grace got you saved. It got you to have eternity. But this right here will give you life. This is the life that you lived so that you can live life and have it more abundantly. That's what we're talking about here now. So you can stop having things taken away from you. He's, and he went on to say, and throw out the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place of grief and torment, there will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. So like, you don't want to be part of that. You want to be a part of, well done, my good and faithful servant. But it starts with you, as Michael Jackson used to say, looking at that man in the mirror, that woman in the mirror, and making a decision that you're going to change things. And part of that is discipline, is habits, is knowing. Like That's why this planner is great, right? Because you can write things down. I don't care if you get a piece of paper, but you have to write down habits that you need to have on a daily basis that will take you to where you need to go. And whatever you've been doing, if it's not getting you to where you're, you're, you want to get and you're not making profits and things aren't working, then call an audible change to play. Uh, get into some trainings, book a strategy session with us, do what you need to do so that you can change your life. See, be comfortable talking about and managing money, business, and profit. If you want to understand what your kingdom destiny is, you have to be comfortable with this. And so many people aren't even comfortable talking about money. They're not comfortable with managing money. They're not comfortable with business. They're not comfortable with profit, profits because they're so worried about what other people think about them or they have this misconception that is something that you shouldn't talk about or that you shouldn't make money for the things that you do. And it's not for the love of it. That's the key thing that I wanted you guys to understand. Making money is not for the love of it. It's taking your resources and doing something with them, making them work, multiplying, right? And growing. That's what this is about. It's the assignment that you were given and, and, and that you were chosen to complete, that you're fulfilling it. That's how you got to look at it. So that means that you're helping people, you're serving people, you're making someone's life better, you're growing the kingdom, you're giving back, you're able to use those resources because, you know, nothing from nothing leaves what? Nothing. Wicked, lazy, servant, 
throwing out. You have nothing, right? You, you know, this is what you have to look at in your life. And I, I promise you guys that all the marketing and the advertising, you can learn everything. It's just like you got so many people with degrees and masters and PhDs and, 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 and they have nothing because they take, you get that knowledge and you don't apply it and you don't use it. He said, and all that get getteth understanding. It may cost you everything that you got, but that's what it takes to be in your purpose. You have to live that way. Let me know if that's making sense to you, to you guys. Are you getting that? See, we are to build a business using our talents to glorify God. That's the whole key thing. It has to be to glorify him, serve the common good, and further God's kingdom. Biblical success is working diligently in the here and now. If you're not diligently working in the here and now, it's not success. And you have to be okay with saying where you're at so you can go where you need to go. It also uses all the talents God has given us to produce the return expected by the master. So we know that it's because of his ability and what he gave us that we're able to accomplish these things. And that's the exciting part about it. And the more talents that we use, the more we will get. It is no different than someone who's, you know, wanting to get into the pro league. They may start out in the little league and, 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 and you know, in the little league, my dad coached, they put everybody in. But as you get older and you get into different levels, only the players get in, right? Only the players play. And, and, and why? Because if you look at them behind the scenes, they're doing the things that we're talking about that you need to do. They're, they're waking up early. They're going to bed late. They're studying more. They're getting trainers. They're getting coaches. They're getting the help. They're reading. They're seeking. They're always out there because that purpose for them was to get into the pro league, right? That's the same thing when you got to look at your kingdom purpose. Is your purpose to get into the pro league with it or do you want to stay in the little league? Because that wicked, lazy servant who did nothing with it, he stayed in the little league. And that's not what you want to happen with you. See, here's this example. When you think of talents, we always normally think of, of it in money. And we're going to talk about that. But here are some of the talents that I want you to write down that you should be focusing on. This is, you know, when you're putting stuff in use, writing, writing. Harvard did a study. They said, if you see, hear, say, and write something six times, you're going to get 62% retention. There is something about when you take the way God created us, the pen, and you put it to paper, and you begin to write out the things, that, you know, just like he, you know, uh, with the Ten Commandments, write it out on the tablet, everything, you know, Jesus said, who are you would say you want to build a tower and you don't sit down and put that uh, plan in place. If you don't have your plan in writing and what you want to get accomplished, then you're not serious about it. So right there, that is the first thing that you got to do. If I come to you and be like, let me see if I open this up, you'll see in writing and like not just not just on on your phone because of mine this is on my phone too but you also need to have everything in writing you need to have a plan in place so like vision mission and all of that stuff it needs to be in writing what you want to accomplish your business goals it needs to be in writing so number one if you don't have it in writing you're not serious about it you're 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 that wicked lazy servant so unbecome that person by writing down what idea God gave you and how you're going to use it. Then you got to do some research. Research is so, so important. Man, in our in our trainings, that we, you spend about a week or so and not and it never stops, right? But just to get you initially out there so you can get that initial profit of doing research. And then you got to brainstorm. And that's one of the keys right there. And inspiring. You got to come to events like this. You got to you know, go read things, be around people who inspire you, listen to God, get inspired. And you got to self-manage. Like that's the key right there is you, like you can't have somebody else, you know, hey, can you wake me up? 
If I wake you up once, I'm always going to be waking you up. Hey, can you do? No, you like you have to self manage you. It has to be so important to you to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, that you make sure you set your alarm two or three times. You do what you say you're going to do in order to make things happen. If you say you're going to make those calls, you make those calls. You time block. Like, I mean, there's different techniques that we help you with in order to help you with self management. But if you're that person who don't show up, well, you always late when you show up and you don't do what you say you're going to do. Like you're not self-managing and self-managing is part of not being that good, that that wicked and lazy servant. You got to network. You got to be out there talking to people, meeting people. You don't like God will send the right people to you. He will like there's so many examples of that will we'll put the right people in your mind. But remember, if you're that wicked, lazy servant, he ain't put nobody in front of you because he about to take what he gave you. That idea is that idea is going to get it done, right? It's just not going to get done by you. It's going to get taken from you. It's going to be given to the person who out there making it happen. So if you see somebody out there making it happen and, and, and you're not that one, that's because you're not doing what you needed to do. So he couldn't trust you with a little and he took it from you, right? So just go get it back. No matter where you've been, where you going? You have to be innovative. That, like God is the creator of all creators. Just go back and read Genesis. Like He He said it, and it was. And so you all, we, 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 we that with we're the God within us will always be innovating. Will always be creating. And so as you're thinking and you're innovating, you're creating, and, and you're in that space, you know that you just got to keep trying things, researching things, recording things, writing it down. You also got to listen. You got to learn to shut your mouth and listen and be quiet and hear him. And, and, and this is like, you have your spaces. I tell you guys, well, you know what? I'm in the shower, I'm driving. Those are my spots where I hear a lot of things because I, I, it, it helps me to quiet water, helps me to quiet my mind. And, and I get to listen <clears throat> and you also got to multiply. And just like they did in the talents. If what you're doing is not growing and you're not multiplying and you've been after it for a month and you haven't made any money on it, something ain't working right, right? You got to multiply that. You got to change that so that you can get to the point where you can change things around and you can immediately start to see profits. And then you take the profits that you see and you're putting them back into your business. And, and then you, you get more inspiration. You do more brain searching, you do more reading, you do researching, you do more writing, you do reading. I should have reading on there, right? These are all the things and watching, like all of the ing, anything with an ing in it, right? These are the things that you need to do. These are examples of how you can use your talent. And I wanted, I wanted to share also that what, a, what is a talent of gold worth today? Because back in the day, I want you to get a big picture of why this, this parable is so important for you to understand and be able to relate to. Because when you look back in the day, it says the typical ta talent weighs about 33 kilograms uh, for today, what is worth today. And in 2018, the international price of gold was about $41,155.69. One gram will cost you $38. So at that price of talent, 33 kilograms will be worth about $1.4 so God gave him 1.4 million and said, "Here, go do what you go, go go do go do what you can do." So if somebody gave you 1.4 million, what would you do with it? Would you be able to double it? Would you be able to triple it? Would you be able to hundredfold it? Would you make it multiply? Or would you just hold on to it? Because that's what a lot of people do. They get some money and they hold on to it. Their fist is like this. If your fist is like this and you're holding on something tight, that, that's your God right there, right? That's your God because you think that I can't release this. I can't give this and put these into resources because if I do, I work, you know, all my life for it. And if I lose it, I'll have nothing. That means that these little things like that, little subtle things, let you know that money to you is more important than you living out your kingdom, your 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 kingdom purpose and your kingdom destiny. That you value money 
over what God said he would do. So those are the things that you have to check. And when you look at the Bible, like back in the day, what it was worth in the Old Testament, and when, when they talk about talents and, and they describe the gold of the Israelites and, and how they use that to build the tabernacle, like there's just money. Like the Bible is full of money, but it wasn't the love of money. It was like you, you are, you, you're come and, and enjoy the master's gifts and everything that he has and what he's getting. He, this is part of being a citizen of the kingdom. This is how you're supposed to live. It's just like if you were a heavenly father, uh, if you were earthly mother and father, you would want your children to be in the best neighborhood, right? You would want them to drive the best and safest cars. You want, want them to have the best of everything. That's it. That's why God said, gave to the ones who had and said, come, come enjoy with me, right? This is, this is why you got to look at it and understand and put it into perspective. Like, what am I doing with what I've been giving? A a am I using it? Because when you look at what it was worth back in the day, right? In the Bible worth time, we're talking a thousand to $30,000. You know, it, it, that's like 20 years for most people to even accumulate. Being a financial advisor, most people don't have even that saved. They're just like one peg paycheck and mindset away from a complete disaster. And they hold on to that because they're so afraid to let it go because they think if I let it go, I'll never get it back again. That means you're not trusting in God. That means that you're not living out your kingdom. That's it. That means you'll never know what it is and, you know, possibly, right? Because if you don't know how to release and know that it's all his, none of it is ours, then it, the life will begin to suck you in, right? And we don't want that for you. So how many talents would you bury if it was given to you, even like straight out right to start a business? How many would you bury? Or how many have you buried? How, how, how are you holding on to money instead of making it multiply for fear of losing it? Look at the prices there. If you look at gold, pl uh, palladium, platinum, and silver, you can see all the prices there. 18, 1831, 938, 21. Like, so how are you valuing this, this, this stuff? Or is it more, are these resources more valuable? More is that the prize for you versus multiplying it and turning it into something like God gave us the tree, right? And then we had to go out and create the chair. You know, he gave us all the resources for the car that it was all here. We had to go out and create those. So that means that you put things on the line in order to make them happen, knowing that he got you no matter what. So with all of that said, that was the reason, number one, of what you should look at when it comes to understanding your purpose. So what I want to do now is even before we go to two, three, four, and five, I want to help you to get into action. So I put together 10 popular business ideas online to help you multiply the talents that you were given. And this is part of the brainstorming. So when I share these with you, you might say, oh yeah. So I was thinking about this and this is something like this. So this can help you get into immediate action and to get started. It says, think about your God-given talents and your ability. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is calling you to do. It will make you uncomfortable and beyond your capability. Search scriptures to help you carry out your assignment and choose the right business. So what is the business you want to build online worth today? And what is it costing you by waiting? Are you going to get called the wicked and lazy servant and have everything taken away from you? Or are you going to take these ideas, even if you were that before we got started and now you realize, okay, now we're brainstorming. So just imagine that we're together, right? We're together. We're going to brainstorm and I'm going to be like, okay, let me give you all of these ideas. And then I want you to pick one and just go with it, right? And don't worry about anything else. And we're going to talk to you about the skill sets and all that. And just know and understand that God gave you these ideas. It's time to roll. It's time to make something happen. It's time to do this. <coughs> 
So these are the top 10 best on online business ideas. And let me know, let me know which one resonated with you, which one you've been thinking about and which one you're going to start in the next 24 to 48 hours. E-commerce, selling goods online, investment capital, cost of supplies, cost of website, necessary resources, trade tools, skill set, expertise in in whatever you're making. You can be selling your own products, art, food, and crafts. You could be one that they say, oh, man, you can cook good, or you're good at car, you know, repairing cars, or you're a great painter, whatever it is you're already good at. Start there, right? Because listen, these are businesses. So you're going to have, like, there's a scripture that says you should have seven or eight, because when one is up, one is down, but you got to get started with at least one. And the easiest one to get started with is something that you're already gifted and skilled at. And then you have that plan in place, right? In order to get to the other ones. If you created a genius new product or you're a painter or you're a fashion jewelry designer or woodworker, even a chef, you can easily take that and sell that online and you can make a profit. You make a profit today. It's easy to set that up. And this is an example of a talent gift or skill that you can use to start a business. You may have some 401k savings. You may have some investments. You may have, like I was telling someone today, they called and was like, man, I don't have this. And it was like, wham, wham, wham. I'm like, what do you got in your house? Well, what do you what do you got that God gave you? Go use it to create the resources, the money to do what you need to do. Stop saying that you failed again. No, you didn't fail again. Remember, I'm not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I can succeed. And the number of times I can succeed are in direct proportion to the number of times I can fail, but keep trying. You got to keep trying and you got to keep trying knowing that you are stepping into the purpose that God has given you to live. Like that you're 401, you're saving, don't make that your God. Don't keep holding on to something that if you died today, it, it, it's, it's there. You can't take it with you. So go multiply it so that you can leave your inheritance to your children's children and make that happen. So selling your goods and using the profits to reinvest that, that's another strategy to go out and go ahead like in the talents and multiply that money. And so you you may need help, y'all. And it's okay to need help because it's not about you. It's about who can get it done. So you might need help with turning it turning it into a business, take going from an idea to a business. You might need help with building your website or your funnel or understanding how to ship your products or marketing and advertising and sales and your SEO and your traffics and your social media and all of that. That's what training classes are for. Or that's what books are for. That's what YouTube videos are for. You go get the help that you need. Don't let that be an excuse why you can't do something. Don't ever say, because I don't know how. Okay, do you want to learn or you want to hire someone who already knows how? That's all you have to do. That problem is solved. So when you look at how much does the average econ business makes in line in 2022, it's mind boggling, right? There was a time when we only had a handful of, of e-commerce players that dominated everything like the Amazons, the Alibabis, the Ebays, and it was a few large pair. But however, nowadays, y'all, things have changed with the smartphones. You got easy access to shoppers. You can go live like I'm doing and you can sell something live and you can set it up where people can buy it off a of messenger. They can buy it right on your page. You can put a link All of that from groceries to gadgets to clothing, anything you can think of, you can get online and immediately turn a profit, immediately turn a profit. And and that's just getting it started, even without a website and all of that. Right. So you look at that. There's two hundred and sixty six point seven million digital buyers out there. So anyone who says I can't sell something anything you're you're not doing something right right you're not doing something right because 266.7 million buyers and nobody wants to buy from you come on now that don't even make sense the number of online shoppers is constantly especially in the u.s is always increasing year after year people want to spend money people want problems solved are you going to be the one to help them with that in 2022 analysts expected there to be 266.7 million digital buyers out there. Are you going to be one who's in business that they can buy for? This is a 1.4% annual increase from the previous year and is always continuously growing. So you got to get in the game. You got to shoot the shot. You can't make any shots that you don't 
take. And so when you're looking at the money that you can make, you, you I want you to think I can take that money and then I can put it back into the resources or put it into that next business. But the average site will make over 150,000 a month in revenues. And then a year from that time, over 333,000 in monthly revenues, and then a million in revenue per month with a staggering 230% from the first year. So like, it's mind boggling what can happen when you get into action. So the people who are here, they're that first talent type person who just got in, made the profit, turned it around and made it more. They were given more. And that person who didn't do anything, they're just sitting back talking about, I never have any good luck. Nothing good ever happens to me. Wah, wah, wah. Like poor me. Like you got to get out of that mindset of poor me. Data shows that at three months, a newly set e-commerce store can make over 63000 in monthly revenue and can average 127000 And that's from you cooking. It's from you building your jewelry. It's from you doing whatever you do because you just went out there and got the job done. You can go from $39,000 of revenue in your first month to over $6.5 million after three years of being out there every single day and making this happen and keeping it going and keeping it going and keeping it going. When nobody knows what you're doing in the background, you're out there marketing, talking to people, messaging people, and you're getting told no, you're getting told no, you're getting told no, you're getting told no, it's going to come, but you don't stop. You keep going. And all of a sudden it's yes. And then another yes. And then they're telling people about it. And then people are seeking you out. And before you know it, your life has completely changed. And the things that you have to do in order to make that happen is understand how the systems work to get that knowledge and understanding. So you need traffic. Uh, you could use email marketing. And, and you got to understand that for every dollar you spend, you should get $32 back in return. Like, so that is the minimum standard that you should be looking at. If I put a dollar out, I'm going to get 32. So when you know things like this and you go put $5 out, you get nothing back, then you can stop and say, whoa, wait a minute. It said if I put a dollar in, I should get 32 back. This is what the people at the, you know, the top are doing. Why isn't it working for me? This is when you get in classes. This is when you get around people who know what you need to know and they can help you and they can teach you so that you can get to that other level quicker. This is when you get into the word so you can, you know, okay, God, you gave this to me. This is something you want me to do. What do you need me to learn? It's not working like I know it can work, but I know it's going to get there, right? See, that's a difference then. Oh, wow, I me, mean, nothing ever works for me. Everything I do, it's always, you know, never working or if something came up, I can't get it done. Like excuses, you got to stop with those excuses so that you can get things done. You can do things like social media. Like I, I come here live every Thursday. And when we're live here every Thursday over the weekend, we're always getting more leads, more leads and more leads and people buying our stuff and things like that. Why? Because I'm giving, I'm sharing, I, I'm telling, I, helping people. And then they begin to see and they stick out and they're like, oh, this makes sense. You can get Google Analytics. You can get insightful data from there. You can uh, learn about SEO, search engine, engine optimization. So even all of those things that I just quickly ran through, like going live, blogs, podcasts, reels, shorts, YouTube videos, stars on Facebook. What is it that you're using? What tools are you using that are available to you? What resources are you using that's available to you to grow your profit? What class have you taken lately? What book have you read? What video have you watched in order to grow your profit? If you haven't done any of those things, then that's why your profit isn't growing. You can also do things like custom shipping boxes. I'm always showing you guys the picture. Uh, we call it our shock and awe box. We learned that from Dan Kennedy, right? The, the custom shipping boxes, that's something that you can do and utilize to separate yourself. And you, you can also have the shareable videos out there on YouTube and watch people unbox them. I'm like, this is the brainstorming. I'm going through this quick because it's brainstorming for you to come up with ideas 
as an entrepreneur so you can get your business into action so that if I if I can't get you to even start making a profit, how are we going to get to your purpose, right? You you because you already got something that you can use. You, like even like with the box there, there's ninety thousand people unboxing on YouTube every month. But you got a product that you can put in the box, but you don't have a box or you don't have a product, right? Over forty video, videos have over ten million views. Are you kidding me? But you're saying nobody wants what you have or your idea won't work because you're not working it. You got to work it. And just simple stuff like a, a box, a fancy box, a discount coupon, a referral code, a sample product, a personalized thank you card. All of these little small tokens can change your life and get people to start buying from you. It's the little gestures and just testing stuff to see what works. You'd be like, okay, I tried that. That didn't work. Okay, I'm going to try this. So it's action. You're in constant action and knowing. Like we have the blogs with, I think we're at uh, like 40 or 50 something ideas that you can use. And, and they're all, I, and, they're on our blog post that you can go in there and you can just start there. Okay, let me do idea one, idea two, idea three. I just go down them and implement them and do these. You can also become a social media influencer. There's low capital investment on that. So your necessary resources, you have to be successful. So you have to have a successful social media account and also the skill set and knowing what to post and how often, what, con what to say in comments and all of that stuff. It's part of it, right? It's not just just like show up every occasionally and things will start to happen. No, there are things you need to do. Like you got the nano influencer, the micro influencer, the mid tier, the, the macro and the mega influencers. And you can see here the follow range they have and the rate per post that they demand. So you can't be a nano influencer with only having one to 10,000 followers and expect to get paid $10,000 per post. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to go through the cycles. You have to go through the system. You have to grow and learn. If you love to write, you can become a writer and blogger, man. That I'm telling you, writing and blogging, people need that all the time. They don't want, they pay people to write from, they pay people to write their emails. It takes a lot of time to sit down and do that. You don't need any capital for that. I mean, all you need is a pen and paper. You can go get that from the dollar store and you can call somebody up. You can get on Messenger and say, hey, I see you, you know, you're, you're posting something or you have emails. Can I write for you? This is something I love to do. Can I do some for you for free so you can see what I do? And then if it works for you and if it's good, then you can pay me. And here's what, you know, if, if you make them money for free, you think they're not going to pay you to, to, to be able to help them make money. This is how you're multiplying your talents and your resources that you were given in order to take that money, put it back into the kingdom and put it also back into your life. Oh, he asked for 10% back to order to grow the kingdom. He, he owns it all, right? So it's that 90%. What are you doing with it? So if you're a great writer, editor, skill, search engine optimization within you know a week or two, you should be making some money because you're helping somebody. And that's things that people don't like to do. Videographer or photographer, if that's your skill, if, if that's your jam, your online business idea of what you want to do because you love doing that, you're already taking pictures. Call somebody up and say, hey, can I, you got the influencers on there, call them up or, or send them some stuff that you've already done and say, hey, here's something I've done or go do something for them and, and give, you know, it's better to give than to receive. And then this is how you start making money. You got to be willing to do stuff for free, give away stuff for free. You can do drop shipping and e-commerce. Um, you, you got a little investment capital on that. You got a learning curve on that. And you have to understand sales and marketing, which take time, but you can get that started without having a physical location. You can do podcasting. Like once I'm done with this broadcast that I have here, I turn this into a podcast. So I do it once and I can, and I take snippets of this and you can use this one live. I can use it for a lot of different things. I can turn it, I can transcribe it. 
turn it into a blog. We can put it on a podcast. And these are the things that we can do. We use it in emails. So you can do something once and then break it up. And and, and now you, you, you're out to everybody. You got all that traffic running in. People are seeing what you do and you did it one time, right? And I love going live. And y'all heard the story when I first went live, but I love doing it this way because you're not... You, 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 like when, when I first went live and I, well, when I said I was going to go live, I did it a recording and then I kept retake, retake, retake. And it was about like 20 I, after I had, uh, 20 of them. I was like, no, no, forget this. I'm just going live and I'm going to keep doing it over and over again and I'll get better at it because ain't nobody got time to be going back and editing all of this stuff. And then eventually you can pay someone to go do the editing. But if you keep thinking that you got to be perfect, you won't take action. And if you understand how to take those resources and multiply them and utilize them, then you can make money quicker and multiply that. You can sell your services online. That's what I do. I learned this stuff and now I teach this stuff, right? As I was learning it back then, I began to teach it immediately. And by doing that, I was able to sell stuff to complete strangers and also people that I knew because they saw me in action and they saw the results. And so, and they're like, oh, okay, well, she she knows what she's doing. So yeah, she can help me in that. So maybe you got a special skill. Maybe you got a talent. Maybe you got something that somebody wants to know. That's one of the easiest things to be able to get someone out there to do. And that's one of the things, y'all, you watching this and this is summertime. We have our summer special at 60% off. You can do that. You got affiliate marketing. You don't even have to create anything. You got people out there who will create something. It relates to you. You can go sell their stuff. Go sell their stuff. They like you got to learn. If you're an entrepreneur, you got to learn selling skills. You got to learn negotiating skills. Those are skip marketing skills. Definitely got to learn more. Like these are skills that you must learn. Eventually, you can start giving those out to other people. But you need to understand, know how to do that. That's how you can take money and go make money real quick. You have to understand that you can do retail arbitrage. Like some of y'all closets are overflowing. You got tags on stuff that you haven't worn in years and. You're never going to wear and you're not doing the work that it takes to get back into that size. Right. So go sell it. Go do resale stuff and go ahead and make money. Like there's ways that you can immediately start making money and get things set up. You can become a freelance designer as well, doing graphics and design work. You see other people now don't get like people get on there and they'll be like, Hey, I saw your, 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 your logo. No one said this to me, but it sucks. And I can help you do better. Or you should have like, you got to understand the language. You got to repel people to you, not say negative things about what they have out there. So always remember that when you're going through these. But these are your top 10 best online business ideas that you can get started with this week. And by the next seven to 10 days, you could be making a profit and turning that money. And then by the time, as the master gets back to you, you've grown that and you've grown that and you have another business started and you're going and you're growing and it's making things. Or are you that person that you're bearing your talents, that you're taking all and listening to all of these ideas that I just gave you? And you're like, oh, yeah, but right? See, he was afraid. He was afraid that if his master returned and there was less money than, than what he was given, that he, it wouldn't be good. So he feared. And because he feared, he didn't get started. So a lot of you, you got money sitting in your accounts that you won't use because you're afraid. You have you have money, things that you can sell, but you don't want to get, uh, get uh, it you don't want to do anything with it because you're afraid. You have ideas that you have and you don't want to utilize them because you're afraid. See, if you don't if you don't do these little small things, you're not going to get to your big kingdom destiny. It is waiting for you to get started. The thing that you get started with may not be the thing that will be your final destination of what you need to do. But to get to your kingdom calling, you got to be willing to have gone through something, to get through something, to make things happen. So don't be driven by fear and bury what's been given to you and keep it in the ground and bury your talents and not make anything happen. Don't be that person. So are you burying it? If you are, are you ready to stop? 
Are you missing out on the life that you were called to have because you're afraid to put your product out there or to put your service out there to get started, to take action? Are you afraid of not making a profit or that if you make too much money, it's also a challenge? Is fear stopping you from leading your destiny? See, the moral of the story and the lessons of the parable of the talent is that you are to use and grow your gifts from God. That's his blessing to you. And you use that for his glory. Is God getting a return on his investment in you? That's the question that I'm asking you. And how would you answer that honestly? And make sure you come to a definite answer with should kingdom business leaders think about business for profit and wealth? That is the number one question I need you to ask yourself so that you can begin to understand what your purpose is. How would you answer that question? How did you answer that question? So guys, we only on part one because we had to care. Question number one, we got five of them because we had to cover all of the stuff up front in order to get you here. So I want you to join us next week for part two, where we will hopefully get through questions two through five so that you can begin to know and discover what your destiny is and uh, your kingdom destiny and what that is. And I don't want you to stop here. I'm sure you got a ton of questions going through your head. Book an appointment with me at calendarly.com. Call Kathy so that we can have a conversation about your kingdom destiny, about your ideas, about where you're at and what it will take to get them out. If you know you already have some ideas and you've already implemented them and you've been an entrepreneur for a while, then our kingdom management enterprise system is where you want to start at, where it's the kingdom culture that we help you with, understanding your CEO management, your leadership, your mission, your vision, your strategic plans, and your ownership structure, your financial development, strategies, positions, capital, legal, like biblical, like this is the example of the talent, the guy with the um, talents who multiplied them five times and he's been given more. This is that person right here. And you, you got to have a team and you have a the business process, your management team, you're all uh, understanding all the attractions and retentions and uh, all the contracts and affiliate programs, all of that we help you with, right? We do that for you in the business process and your clients and your patients and your customers and the traction and retention management systems, you know, growth. And because some of you are like, I have no idea what she's talking about. That means that you're not in that one of five who are already multiplying you. you you're not in business. So this will apply to you. That's why you need to make that appointment with us so that we can help you with whatever level that you're at. You can do that by either going to calendarly.com call Kathy or go call us at one 833 bible Biz during normal business hours. We have memberships. We have academies in that done for you program that I just talked about. When you go to our calendar session, you'll see this right here. And you just put in calendarly.call call call Kathy, you pick a date that's going to ask you some questions, you fill out those questions, and then we'll be sending you some homework and stuff to do before we get on the call so that we can make sure that we're having a good strategic session with you. It's not about selling you something, it's about educating and helping you and getting your questions answered so that you can get your, your, your gifts and your resources that you have, you can get them into action. So guys, I know this has been you know, a lot of information tonight and you got to watch it or if you're catching it during the replay. But if you stuck around, I'm just proud of you. If you're in action, I'm proud of you. If you're so focused on making sure that you're doing what God has called you to do, I am proud of you. You can make it happen. And if you do it with us, we're 100 percent going to be here for you. Remember one of those ideas when I talked to you about building that box that to to 
you know, do the unboxing. Well, this is ours, right? This is one that we have that we give away to people. And part of some of our trainings, we actually teach you how to do that as well. So if you join one of our programs, we're going to get this out to you. So if you got questions, I'm going to hop back over to the other side in a second. Go ahead and start typing those in because we're on a delay and we'll be able to get those answered for you. So if you're ready to discover how to build your six to seven figure kingdom business and you want to get that done and you want to use your skill, your expertise and some of those resources that we talked about and multiply those talents, you're at the right place. So give us a call or text 1833 Bible Biz. You can even email us if you prefer emailing at info at Kathy McReynolds dot com. We got the kingdom management enterprise systems for that person who's already over six figures, already in business that we can help you with. And our memberships, academies, and all the done for you programs, whatever level you're at, we can help you with that. We just need to have that conversation so that we can get help you get to where you need to be. So go to calendarly.com, call Kathy and book appointment. You'll either be speaking with me or one of our salespeople to help you with that. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and back over here and let's see. Uh Oh, hold on one second. What questions we may have out there and they want okay all right we made it back over here all right i see something over here in the chat um let's see let's see i'm gonna go back up here okay hold on I'm going to show a little shout outs in the beginning as well. It says, hello, um, my name is Jamie and I'm from Kukuraku. Well, hello, hello and welcome out. We're glad you joined us out here. And uh, I love Donetta. She's like, you're too funny. All right, girl, you are too. I love watching you and her and her husband. They're so cute. And Jamie says, yes, I'm all in and i am ready and we also who else said they're ready out there holloway man you've been around you you've hung in there with us it's been a couple hours so we are glad you are ready 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 um let's see it says make sense getting it okay makes sense getting it and loving it and you guys might also have this question that I'm asked, what 60% off? So our Genesis Academy, which is normally um, $5,000 for $997, that's 60% off. So you can learn about that at BibleBusinessAcademy.com forward slash go. Or you can call us and we can talk to you about that. But we have a special on that. That's 60% off. Great question there. Um, let me see. If we have anything else, I don't see anything else, guys. If something else has come up and you got questions on that, make sure you go ahead and let us know. So in the meantime, I'm going to head back over here and let me go and just let you know, just a reminder as we're getting off of here, you can download a free report on how to grow a business with biblical principles. I hope this brought you a lot of value tonight. You can pick up a copy of our Believe and Grow Rich. Um, get that copy right there um, at uh, Amazon or go to believeandgrowrich.org. You can get that and you can also get a copy of our book, Bible Business Secrets from Amazon, or you can get the digital copy from us um, at believe at biblebusinessacademy.com forward slash book. And again, as I said, you can get it in our membership programs. You can do whatever you need to do. We just want to help you to be able to get things done. And we like, thank God we made it through this night without coughing and, um, uh, all of that other stuff, but I appreciate you guys. And, um, if I don't see anything else, I'm going to head off and we will see you next week. But I hope to be talking to each and every one of you who are on here in one of our strategy sessions so that we can help you get done what you need to get done. So y'all have a great day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.